From the coronation of Casey Stoner as the King of the Island to Valentino Rossi's reign, Phillip Island has proven home to some of the most epic moments in World Championship history. Ask anyone that's been to Phillip Island for MotoGP, they'll have their own moment that should make our top five. But what is the real top five? I am joined here by MotoGP race winner Chris Vermeulen and Chris, Coming up with a list of epic moments for Phillip Island, it wasn't a short one, was it? No, I think when we, we first spoke about this, the list was massive, wasn't it? There's been nearly every year you go there, something different happens, something changes. It's, it's spectacular because of this, this or this. And it's had some of the closest finishes of all Grand Prix racing history. So it is a spectacular place to put racing on. And that's why we love going there. Top five or top 20, your, your choice. <laughs> but, uh, if you do think we've left something off our top five list, let us know in the comments below. Don't be shy. Number five, 2013, Jorge Lorenzo. Now, Chris, 2013, Jorge Lorenzo broke a long-standing pole record at Phillip Island. This was not your ordinary qualifying lap because he actually broke the lap record with a passenger. <laughs> I mean, it's the first time I'd worked in television, so I'd stopped racing for a few years and I come back and the, the track had been resurfaced first of all. So the lap times were impressively fast all weekend. Then Jorge goes out and qualifying, puts the soft Bridgestone tire in, hits a seagull and does the lap with what you could say is maybe the first winglet on the bike. But, <laughs> but I remember thinking at the time and I was working with Daryl Beatty going at 27 around the island. Can you imagine doing a 27? It was insanely fast, impressive to watch. With a seagull stuffed in the right front <laughs> fairing as well. But I do remember, broke the lap record, takes a seagull out, goes even quicker. And uh, he said, yeah, look, I went a little bit faster on the second lap. I didn't have to carry the passenger around. But uh, I do remember one of the headlines of the day was uh, Lorenzo gives rivals the bird, the lap record, which go. I quite enjoyed. So uh, someone did their job that day. He deserved that one. <laughs> Number four on our list, 2011, Casey Stoner. Now, Chris, I like to refer to 2011 and Casey Stoner. It's sort of Casey's birthday bash. He wins the world championship on his 26th birthday by winning his home Grand Prix. The sun was even out. Like it shows you how good it was at <laughs> Phillip Island that day. It was almost the absolute perfect script to seal a world title, wasn't it? Just to win a world title, be challenging for a world title is impressive for, you know, the amount of wins he had around the island was impressive. But for all of that to come together on the same day, be announced world champion, win, win for your fifth time, it's your birthday. I mean, pff, things couldn't get any better. And I spoke to Casey about all his wins here. I've done it for television before. And he said they're really hard to pick, but that one definitely stands out for him. It is hard to pick your favourites, but everything just aligned for him that day. You remember he was in a head-to-head -head for the title with Jorge Lorenzo and Jorge injured himself in the yep. Sunday morning warm-up, so he didn't compete. So there probably wasn't a great challenge for him in that race, knowing how good he was around there. But for all those things to align, it was just the, the perfect way to do it, wasn't it? I know, and he took it and he did it. And he, he still had to be the guy out there and, and beat Danny Pedrosa on the same motorbike and Valentino Rossi and, and everyone else that was in that race. So yeah, he is impressive around the island. And number three, 1989, Wayne Gardner. Now, Chris, 1989, the first ever World Championship race at Phillip Island. Wayne Gardner had won the World Championship in 87. He was a huge reason why this event was at Phillip Island in the first place. And I think it's one of those ones over the years that you look at the vision of the crowd. There's a massive crowd there that day. I think everyone who likes motorbikes tells you they were actually there, but the pressure on him to win his first race at home, and then he goes out and does it. You're right, he was the first Premier Class champion that Australia had had. He was a big involvement to get the race here. Um, and television numbers and the sport was followed massively in those days. SBS used to cover the races and then Channel 9 and uh, supported massively. And uh, I love listening to the old commentary. There's Barry Sheen in there as well. And it was just cool days. I, I was a young kid and, and I remember watching that bike race and, uh, and just seeing an Australian win the, the, the main race. It was, um, it was very cool to, uh, to, to just, and I still remember that, but talk to Wayne about it now. And um, he did, he felt the pressure, but he dealt with it and he came through and it, what an impressive win. And that vision of his fiance Donna running up the start finish straight <laughs> on the, in high heels and a, and a dress, mind you, to congratulate him at the end. It's one of the signature moments, isn't it? Too, well, right? it comes up in sporting great moments for, for Australia, doesn't it? And it's and it well deserved. And uh, I'm just proud that motorcycling is part of that. Absolutely. Moment number two, 2022, Alex Rins. Now, Chris, what a way for Alex Rins to win the Australian Motorcycle Grand Prix in 22, because we knew at the time that Suzuki were about to pull out. It's the third last race of the season. Rins doesn't even know where he's going to be riding next year. He's always been good at that circuit, Moto2, Moto3, but for him to come out on top of a race where the top seven were separated by seven tenths of a second, for him to win that, hugely emotional. And I dare say, as an old Suzuki man, you would have had you know, maybe a little bit of 
not a dry eye for you, I would say. <laughs> I, I was very excited, I remember. And I, and I think he started on the fourth row of the grid as well. And I've spoken to the Suzuki team when they were there. Why, why is he such a good racer? And they said it's, it's, it's in his head. And when he gets in a battle, that's what he loves. He just doesn't like going out and doing laps and trying to be quick. He loves being in a race and he's a racer's racer. And you could see that seven guys, you know, after 27 laps around the island fighting for first place and he battles with it. Well, it, it felt like the last lap for 27 straight laps, but I think what was interesting there is you had Marc Marquez on the comeback trail at a circuit where he's incredibly good in that front fight. And you had Pekka Bagnaia, who's trying to put one hand on the championship trophy at this point. And you thought at some point, someone's going to play the percentage game here. Nobody did. And on that last lap, Rins was just absolutely fantastic. I mean, they were all, the, the risks were out there, weren't they? There was no one, Pekka particularly, he was trying, he tried really hard for that win. And that was, that was a, a, a really, uh, you know, strong third place. But that shows how, how strong the Suzuki was at the end of its time in MotoGP, which is, is sad that they pulled out because they had such a great product then as well. But how quick Alex Rins can be on his day. Certainly. Now, Chris, we've got to number two. Honourable mentions in the epic moments of the island that we couldn't fit in. <laughs> I always think the strength of a list is by what hits the cutting room floor. It's pretty hard. Oh, that's it. 2014, Valentino Rossi wins for Yamaha. Probably a win we didn't see coming given how dominant Marc Marquez was there. That's one that deserves an honourable mention. But two things out of 2012 for me. Casey's sixth island win, his last MotoGP win before he retires. But that day, 2012, Casey won the MotoGP race. Ant West was second in Moto2, and Arthur Sissis was third in Moto3. So he had this incredible day in front of the Australian fans at Phillip Island. Aussies on every World Championship podium. I remember seeing Arthur's face, where, you know, his podium in front of his home crowd. He'd had a, a really bad season up to that point, was thinking of quitting, all sorts of things. And then to stay on the podium there, was it, it was so cool to see. I mean, Westy, you never write him off when conditions aren't perfect. And uh, still today, he's quick. Um, and then, I mean, Casey Stoner, what do you say? He went a right around the island too. So uh, it, was, it was an impressive day. So they've hit the cutting room floor. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so there can only be one epic Phillip Island moment that hits number one on this list. Number one, 2006, Marco Melandri. Now, Chris, you're uniquely placed to talk about Marco Melandri in 2006 because I think you were the last bloke to actually realise what he'd done in the last corner. For those of you playing along at home, of course, you were second to Marco in that race. But uh, we talked to Marco several years after. The famous power slide with a little victory symbol at the end, that was one he'd rehearsed, wasn't it? I didn't know this till, till recently. That He'd practised it once in, in testing and thought, because he had a big gap over me in the race and the conditions were really slippery. He goes, I think I can do that and pull the power slide and do the peace sign. I meant to risk that. I was hoping it was going to go wrong. I tell you, it could have been my first GP win, but um, I was happy enough to stand on the podium because the crowd was singing. Uh, Vermeulen kicked Rossi's ass, doodah, doodah. So Valentino was third that day. But um, it is a memorable moment for me from my racing career. But I mean, how cool is that vision? It's just it's just the coolest, I reckon. It's one way to win it. It's also one way to do it in a bit of style. You don't get any points for style, but we love the fact that he showed some style. But it's funny, like, you sit in the press room at Phillip Island every year. There's the perfunctory sort of, you know, round of applause <laughs> when someone wins. The entire press room just burst out laughing, thinking the audacity of this guy to slide the bike through the corner while giving the peace sign to win a Grand Prix. Doesn't get much cooler than that. Doesn't get any cooler, I reckon. So that's it for our list of epic moments at Phillip Island. I'm Matt Clayton, he's Christopher Mullen. We look forward to seeing new track side where MotoGP next comes to Australian shores.